Okay, Rabbi, I think you can start. Good evening and welcome to a very, very special event. Tonight's event, which coincides with the anniversary of the tragic assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. This program is going to be, or has been organized and will be presented by our Shinshinit Liel Kandalkar. Liel is here as part of Israel Engagement Experience Initiative, and we are very, very grateful to have Liel with us this year, providing a connection with Israel that we would never be able to have otherwise. And we are looking forward to this program. Before we begin, I wanna welcome everyone. Everyone here is a very special person and we're glad that you're here. But we do have one unique person on this Zoom session. And that is Roman Lesniak is with us tonight. Among many other accolades and accomplishments, Roman served in the IDF. Oh. And in 1948, Roman's commander was Yitzchak Rabin. Wow. So we have someone on this call who literally served under Commander Yitzchak Rabin. And what a great honor to have you with us, Roman. Perhaps later we'll hear from you. At this time, I want to turn it over to Leo. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Rabbi, um, for, introducing, for introducing me. And thank you, Roman, for joining us. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. I am Liel. I am 18 years old and I came to Montreal to here two months ago, actually, as part of the Shinshin program, the Shinshinim program, uh, as part of Israel engagement. Uh, I came here to do a gap year of volunteering in the Jewish community. And as part of this gap, gap year, um, I work in Adat and Adat Synagogue, volunteer here, which is an amazing synagogue. Um, since I came here, it's been a wonderful time to go at Shabbat. And we discussed, me and Stu and Rabbi Whitman, and we thought it will be very, um, very good and helpful for us to do a Zoom meeting about Ishaq Rabin. Today, it's his Memorial Day. It's his 26th uh, anniversary since he died. And I'm 18 years old. So of course I wasn't born um, in that time. And I was born to a reality of Memorial's days and activities about him. And as um, what I remember from that day is that we didn't study we were just talking about him, about his legacy, and about the values he shared with, with everyone in Israel and the whole world. So before we're going to start, I, I'm going to show you a video that sums up the whole uh, environment in that time in the day of the assassination. תמיד האמנתי שמרבית העם רוצה בשלום, מוכן ליטול סיכון לשלום, ואתם כאן, בהתייצבותכם בעצרת הזאת, מוכיחים עם רבים אחרים שלא הגיעו לכאן, שהעם באמת רוצה בשלום. Israel! 
הדמגוג עמוק על מותו של ראש הממשלה ושר הביטחון יצחק רבין אשר נרצח בידי מתנקש הערב בתל אביב So the video that we just uh, watched is started from the peace rally in November 4th, 1995, the day that Itzhak Rabin was assassinated. Um, it was Saturday and Itzhak Rabin was in the peace rally in honor of the peace. He wanted to make peace. He was trying to make peace and he made a peace rally. Everyone was, was, were there and there were so many people there. Everyone celebrating peace and screaming and yelling and singing. They sang a song for peace. Later that day, Itzhak Rabin was assassinated by Igal Amir, which was an Israeli Jew that lived in Israel. It was, he didn't agree with Yitzhak Rabin and he decided he's going to kill him. He shot him three times and Yitzhak Rabin was dead that day. Um, I want to tell you more about his life. Um, okay. So this is Yitzhak Rabin. He was the prime minister in Israel, as you all know. But I'm going to tell you more about stuff that he did before. So he was born in Israel in 1922. He lived in Tel Aviv his whole life. When he was 26, he joined the army. And it was called the Palmach in that time before um, Israel was, uh, before they announced about Israel, before it was a country. Um, he was in the army for 26 years. And his climax was to be the chief of staff. He was the head of the army. Later than later that um, year, he was retiring from the army in 1948, and then um, no, in 1968, and he became the ambassador, the Israel ambassador in Washington D.C. He lived in Washington for like five years and he was the ambassador there. After that, he came back to Israel and he became the prime minister for the first time, for his first time. He was the prime minister for three, for three years. It was in 1974. Um, then he retired from that. And about 10 years later, he became the prime minister for the, for the second time. So when he became the prime minister for the second time, he did some great things. He was doing, he did um, a peace agreement with uh, Jordan. So in this photo, you can see this is Israel Rabin and this is um, King Hussein and Bill Clinton, if I'm not wrong. And this is in the day that they signed the peace agreement, which was an amazing day. Um, of course, I wasn't there, but um, I was talking to my dad and he always mentioned that he remembered that day, the day that they made peace with, uh, with Jordan. After that, he was trying to make peace with, uh, with the Palestinians and he actually got a Nobel Prize for it. So this is him and this is Shimon Peres, which, which was the president of Israel, not in, that, not in the same time, but he was a president in Israel. And, um, Yasser Arafat, which was the head of uh, PLO, the Palestinian organization, and they all got a, a Nobel Prize for, for it, for trying to make peace. Um, it was in 1994. A year after, Itzhak Rabin was in the peace rally in November 4th, 1995, it was in the peace rally in Tel Aviv. They were all celebrating peace and happy and everyone was so happy and screaming and yelling as we saw in the video. And in that um, day, Itzhak Rabin was shot. This was the end of peace as we, as we remember. 
Um, we still don't know what would happen if Yitzhak Rabin wasn't uh, got shot in that day. When I think about it, I think it's the closest that we've ever been to have peace with the Palestinians. And it makes me very sad to think that we could have make peace and not being in wars. And my whole life, I grew up in Be'er Sheva. So I was living the reality of, um, of rockets shot into my house. And for me to think that we were so close to not have it and to be normal, to live like a normal people, it's very sad. Um, next thing I want to talk about is what we remember from that day. So the government of Israel announces in dismay, in great sadness and in deep sorrow, the death of Prime Minister and Minister of Defense Yitzhak Rabin, who was murdered by an assassin to, to, tonight in Tel Aviv. May his memory be blessed. Those exact words were in the day that he died. Um, Eitan Haber, announced his dad, and this is what he told the news. If you would ask every Israeli um, what he remember from that day, he would say that he remembers the exact same words. Um, I, I can tell you that I was speaking to my parents in Israel. They all told me, oh yeah, Memshelet Israel Mudiabet Adema. Of course we remember it. Everyone remembers, remembers it. And I made, I actually made a Padlet, which is a shared community, a shared wall, and I send it to people in Israel. I wanted to see and to hear what they think and what they remember from that day, since I wasn't alive that day. So I'm going to read some of the comments that people in Israel uh, wrote here. I was at my parents' house. I was asleep. I woke up to a noise. My mother yelled that Robin was shot. At first, I didn't understand. It sounded fiction, like a story about revolutions in a foreign country. I called my best friend who went to the rally and he already um, returned home to his house. We didn't have cell phones back then. My friend cried and sobbed and said that he already heard. We, we had, we had a hard time believing it, it happened. Tomorrow, everyone was shocked. Everyone was stuck to the TV and didn't go to work. It took us a few days to process what happened, but we didn't really process it till now. For me to think that a Jew, an Israeli Jew, killed a prime minister is so shocking. I, I don't think the human brain can process this kind of thought. How can a Jew kill a person who is trying to make peace? So, okay, you don't agree with him, but for me to think that he took the law to his, to his own hands and he decided to kill him in the peace rally, which really means something, which means something very terrible. How can you kill someone in a peace rally? This thought remains with me always. I'm gonna read another one. I was in a movie with some good friends. During the break, someone came into the hall and shouted, Robin was murdered. Everyone was in shock. We did, we did not know if it was a terrorist assassin assassination or something else. When we realized it was a religious Jew who murdered him, we were in shock. Then came the anger and realization that he murdered a father to all of us. Yitzhak Rabin was a great man. Of course, we can agree or not or disagree with him, but he was a great man. And some Israelis, most of Israelis saw him as a father, as you can hear from this comment. So what I want to tell you is that that time in that day, Everyone were in shock. Um, I can tell you that people were crying. They're on the streets, walking. People didn't go to work. 
it doesn't and it doesn't matter if you're against him or or you're for him everyone were in shock so um rabbi do you want to share with us what do you remember from that day sure sure um i remember it also uh, very clearly i was in my shul in my synagogue in new haven connecticut and we were just coming to the end of shabbat of course in israel it was a number of year a number of hours later already so it had already happened and um we were sitting together a group of us about to start mariv the evening service and someone ran into the shul and they told us the news that rabin had been assassinated and all of us were in shock, everyone in shul. It occurred to me that, to the best of my knowledge, that was the first time a Jewish person had assassinated a Jewish head of state since Gedalia, since the narrative in the Book of Kings of Gedalia, the reason that we have Tzom Gedalia, the fast of Gedalia. He was the head of state after the destruction of the first temple. And he was assassinated by other Jews. It is a deep stain on the Jewish people. And one of the lessons that I think we need to learn is that in the weeks and months before this happened, there was a lot of talk, a lot of inflammatory talk. And I think it's impossible to know exactly how that talk connected to the actions of this terrible person. But I do think it teaches us that every one of us needs to be responsible to speak out against violence, against violent speech, against advocating violence. Any kind of action like that is something that, God forbid, could lead to it actually happening. So those were some of the thoughts that I had then and I expressed then, and it remains one of the deep tragedies of Jewish history. Thank you for sharing it with us. Um, maybe we can hear from Roman what you thought and what you felt in that time. Would you like to share it with us? Oh, we can't hear you. Can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yes, Roman. Okay. Okay. It was a great tragedy, not only for the Jewish people, but for the whole world as a whole. Israq Rabin was not only a great hero on the battlefield, but he was a mensch. He was a mensch of peace. He was a good person. And, and, here in Montreal, uh, people were crying and crying that a Jew, like Rabbi mentioned before, could kill another Jew. And as for us, for the veterans of the 1948 war, we took it harder probably than more than other uh, than anybody else. Because we're like, like a bunch of brothers. We're only 75,000 people facing a million Arabs. And with God's help, we won the war. When the war finished, not finished, we never finished the war. We just signed dozens and dozens of ceasefires. In each ceasefire, sometimes didn't hold five minutes because they start shooting again. But when we signed the last 
ceasefire in 1949, proudly I can tell you that we got 22% more territory than a year before the United Nations gave us. And if ever, if you ever, and after this Zoom, when we finish, go on the, the computer and punch in the map of Israel, 1940, 15 of May, 1947. You can high find Naharia. There were 100 places, Arab Jewish, Arab Jewish. You could not travel from Haifa to Naharia because you have to come to Arab villages. So I had to make a road by the sea there. We only got, there was no place to pass. And Israq Rabin was one of them who help us to do that. Thank you so much. It was so amazing to hear you. Thank you very much. When I thought about doing this Zoom meeting about Itzhak Rabin in honor of his dad, I thought that this is so important for everyone to know about it, to know about um, a Jew, an Israeli Jew who killed a prime minister. I came to know that not everyone here knows about it, um, even if you're Jewish. I work in I work in a school. I work in Maimonid, and for me, it's so obvious that in his Memorial Day, we talk about him, we honor his dad, his dad. And I came to know that it's not like that. So I actually took it into my own hands and we made activities today with the children because I think this is so important for everyone to remember it, to understand and to talk about violence and that it's not a key. And as Yitzhak Rabin used to say, yes for peace, no to violence. And this quote remains with me till, it will remain with me till I die, I'm sure. So. I want to ask you guys, what were your feelings? What was your feeling in that time? If anyone wants to share what he remembers, um, the news, um, whatever that's on your mind. So I would really love to hear you. So from a, a Zoom etiquette perspective, what we'll do is uh, I'm monitoring the, uh, the windows right now. If anyone wants to share, just wave your hands and I'll, I'll call on you guys. Not all at once. <laughs> it's really interesting for me to, to listen and to hear what you thought, what you felt. I think uh, Wesley. 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 Yeah. I'm trying to unmute. Wesley, you okay. Mm -hmm. I was trying to unmute. It wasn't working. Okay. So uh, I told you about this uh, on, uh, on Shabbat Liel. But uh, my memories, I'm not that old, but my memories were, uh, were are that uh, I have a radio on in my house 24 7, 365. Uh, I had just woken up from my afternoon nap just before getting, just before getting ready to go to school. And uh, my neighbor and my very good friend, uh, Chazen Yaakov Motsen, the Chazen of our school at the time, lived about a block from me. And when I heard it on the radio, I ran to his house and told him and he broke down and started crying. He literally started crying about it because he thought that that was the, that Yitzhak Rabin was the path to have a, 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 a lasting peace. And it, to see him uh, break down like that, to see him so emotional was really something special. Thank you so much. It really connects with what I know from Israel that everyone were crying. Even if there were children or there were adults, if they agree with him or disagree with him, it was so tragedy that everyone cried. It was shocking to everyone. So I wanna to talk to you about the med media coverage in that time. Um, I made this collage, as you can see, about um, the newspaper and the media coverage at that time. And I would like you to just to take a moment and to see and read um, 
some of us, some of some of them are from Israel news and some of them are from the US. There is one from um, Canada and just read and see what attracts your eyes. So of course, a prime minister that got that gets shot, um, it's a big deal. Everyone talks about it. Everyone knows about it. And in Israel, I know they spoke about it um, for a long time. And I would like to hear what you remember from the media. Do you remember if it was like a huge deal? Do you remember if they talked to you about it in school? If um, it was on the news. I really want to know. So if one, if someone would like to share what he remembers. Because here in Montreal, um, I'm sure it wasn't like in Israel. Uh, there, there's Stephen. I see you raising your yes. hand. Hi, Neil. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. And I see Adi there also. Hello, Adi. Good to see you. Rabbi Whitman. So I remember actually when Rabin was assassinated, I was working at Hillel at the time. And I remember the funeral, I guess it's somewhat media related because I remember going to Hillel very early in the morning at five o'clock in the morning to open the door. I mean, this was pre-internet and we were a lot of people and students coming to watch the funeral. And it was something amazing to see with people from all over the world, world leaders from everywhere, coming to the funeral on, on Har Herzl. Um, I remember very well the, what Bill Clinton said. He said, Shalom Khaver. I think something to, to that effect. Right. It had a tremendous impact on me and a tremendous impact on the people I was watching with and, and how we were stunned, stunned that a, a, a Jew could take a a gun and kill someone, kill another Jew in cold murder because he just didn't agree with him politically. I think it's very important just to go back to Rabbi Whitman's words, how dangerous words can become um, when people start taking action. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I know it was, of course, um, a very difference from the Israeli news the because in Israel, everyone was speaking about it. And it means, it means a lot for me to hear and to learn from you about what you experienced. Um, I would like to ask Adi, my, my amazing supervisor, to share her thoughts about um, this day. Can you un unmute, unmute yourself? Okay. Yes, thank you, Liel. And Thank you uh, for all the people who are participating. So I was in the ninth, in ninth grade when Rabin was assassinated. Um, I was a member of the scouts in the Israeli scouts in Jerusalem where I grew up. And that night, the majority of my friends went to the peace rally. I didn't join them uh, at that time. And until today, I don't like crowded place. It always makes me nervous. So I didn't go. And I remember that in the morning, um, my parents woke me up and told me that. And I remember going to school and that's all we spoke about. And that day we had like a, um, a special assembly at our scouts group, like not just, not, not just my group, but, but everyone. And then the year after was, I was in the 10th grade and I was a, um, a counselor at the scouts. And it was the first time for me to write an educan, educational content or to write some uh, educational program for the, the children that I was their, their leader, their council. They were uh, in the seventh grade. And I remember that it was very hard because it was still very, very new. And it was something that um, the tension in Israel back then was very strong and I think that conversations of when you are against something violence is not the solution 
And I would also, also like to share that in those days, a lot of um, intercourse um, um, groups came and uh, discussions group. And one of them is called Geshir, which in Hebrew stands for bridge. And it was decided among the, the, the civilian society, the Israeli society, that the best solution is to speak and to speak about um, among ourselves and to know each other and to understand like in every machloket, like in every time that you disagree with someone, you need to, to discuss and you need to try to understand the other, the other, um, the other side, even if you don't agree, but you need to understand and you need to give room for those opinions. Um, and I think that they really led me in, in some ways to learn more about machlokot and to learn more about how you um, speak with one another and how you uh, compromise on things and how you under, how you get to be a better a better person in that sense. Uh, and I know that the majority. I look to the people, and I know that the majority uh, were adults at that time, and that you probably experienced that in in a, in a very interesting way. And I think that Liel, as an eighteen year old, and really someone, as she said, was born into this reality. I think it, it's it's just show to tell how much the Israeli society and the world jury see the importance of that day and really continue to educate and to commemorate 26 after and, and I hope that until the end uh, of the generations because like Retzach Dalia, the, the murder of, of Dalia that uh, Rabbi Whitman opened with, I think it's something that we can just learn from and to understand how to shape our lives in a better way, in a better society. Thank you, Liel. Thank you, Adi, for sharing. Appreciate it. Um, so, as I said, I was born into a reality of Memorial Day, Memorial Days and activities and learning about his values and learning about peace. And I would like to hear Nicole, which is my friend. Um, she is another Shinshinit. Uh, she works in Bialik and in the synagogue at Rosh Emet. She will tell us a bit about her feelings and how she experienced the, the whole Memorial Day in, in Israel um, in her childhood. her childhood. So thank you, Liel. And hi, as you said, my name is Nicole Mosa Shinshinit, and Liel's age. Um, and like Liel, ever since I remember myself um, in, in school, high school, middle school, even elementary school, We've had Memorial Days about Rabin. Each time we all know what to expect. We know that in Israel, it's a big thing. It's like the Memorial Day for 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 um for the soldier who got hurt. And you know, we have a day for that. Just like that, we know we have a day in the year that is dedicated to Rabin. We have a bunch of programs, a bunch of activities about his murder. And as the year went by, as we, I got older, I feel like the conversations in my high school and schools, they got more mature, they got more, they got deeper, they got more, more into details and more about how do we as a society can prevent it from happening again? And how can we learn from it? And even though it was a horrible event to try to take um, this thing and really branch out of it to, to something better, to try to grow out of it and grow better from it. So I think just like Adi said, it really um, opened up a conversation about the peace, about how do we as a society let that thing happen? How do we prevent it in the future? And how do we correct it? And like Liel said, I was born into the reality that Rockets are a part of the daily routine, unfortunately. Um, if there's any, um, how do you say, terror attacks or stuff like that, it's very, it's very normal, unfortunately. It's not something good, but um, I think I was always wondering what happened if. I know there was always that, that thing that he was murdered before the um, Palestinian... Um, Palestinian, uh, how do you call it, peace sign. Um, and I feel like I was, I always wondered what if, what if it would have happened? What if um, it would have went through? What if, I don't know if you know it, but there's a story that before uh, Itzhak Rabin went in the rally, 
he was offered by his guards to put on uh, uh, like a, a protector, a shield. In Hebrew, we call it chachbat, like the one who protects you from getting uh, shot. Like if you get bullets, it won't go through. It's like what the police people have. Um, so there's the story about when one of his guards um, told him that he needs to put it on and he refused because he said, if my nation, if my people will hurt me, then I don't want to be their leader. And then he didn't go up with a, with a chest shield, shield and eventually he did get shot. And there's always that, what if he would have gone on with the shield? What if he wouldn't have murdered? What if he just listened to the guard and put it on? Maybe it would have created a whole different um, reality right now. Because I, in Israel, I live next to an Arabic village around five minutes away. And I know that along the years, it's been a friendly um, village. But just now in the Guardians of the Walls and in the Intifada in the 2000s, it was very, it was very not easy living next to them. It was always this fine line between peace and between, um, um, between, sorry, how do you say, um, not anarchy, but a balagan, the way you call it in Hebrew. It's a very fine line and it, it's always scary to cross it. It's always scary that things will, um, rise up again. And I feel like a big thing that happened from that for me is a big feeling of frustration because here was this amazing guy that did want to make a change. He did try to make a difference and he was actually doing and going forward with it. He was this close. He was this close to doing a big, huge change. And sure, even if he was did go through with it, we don't know how it would affect today. He could have not gone through even if the peace sign would have been assigned. It could have, I don't know, fell apart after a year, but still it gives me this frustration feeling that even when someone in our nation um, tries, he gets blocked by our own nation. He gets blocked by one of us. So I feel like that day gives me a lot of frustrations, but as I said in the beginning, it also taught us and helped us um, rise from it and try to grow from it and learn and really have an open conversation with the younger generations about the values that uh, he rooted and the values that can come out of these unfortunate events. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. It was so interesting to listen to you and to share it and for you to share it with us. So what I wanted to achieve from this from this night, from this day, when I'm doing the activities in the school and when I'm speaking to you guys, is for you to understand and to really connect with the Israeli feeling, with the sadness and the ang angry and the angry feeling that we as Israelis feel about this day, about Igal Amir, which uh, murd which was the murder of Itzhak Rabin. Um, when I think about this day, I have this feeling of we were so close to peace, but now for me, I don't feel that peace is close. I feel that I'm gonna spend my life in Be'er Sheva and I'm gonna raise my uh, uh, future children with a reality of going into, um, into the, the safe room and experience rockets should enter your house and it's so normal for me so as nicole said we we all have in israel we all have this feeling of what if as a teenager i didn't live that time i don't know um a lot about the um the the feeling and the um, the 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 art how do you say the art the art like um, opinions like, the, the opinions yeah, the of yeah, like the opinions of the ones that agree with agreed with him or disagree with him. I don't know. I all I know is that it could have saved me a reality of thinking that records that shot that is shooting into your house is normal. When you hear the siren, okay, yeah, let's go to the safe room. It would it, it could be it could be better than that. And I want to end this um meeting by reading you a paragraph that a very famous and amazing poet his name is uh, Noam, Chor Noam Chorev wrote about what he remembers from that time from that day that Yitzhak Rabin was uh, shot Israeli November the nights are false 
I'm a small kid that looks out from the side in the window in front of me. There are, there are three stars, like three shots, in the sky of fabric. It's really November. In the TV, there is some movie that speaks only in Old Hebrew. All of a the sudden, there is a news flash from the end of the rally. And my mom breaks down and says, the country is lost. The government of Israel announces, announced in shock. And, and then there is silence. The neighbor shouts from, from outside. And I don't even understand about what. I'm a terrified boy. Don't even know about what. All of the grown-ups are talking about in the corner, um, but from the end of the hall, in the middle of the living room, I see my dad cries for the first time. So with that poem, I want to leave you to think about this special day, this special man that tried to make peace. And my main goal is to spread the peace, um, the peace thought that you need to speak, not doing, like, as he said, yes for peace, no to violence. To speak is the solution for everything. And we have to make sure that this kind of event will never happen again. Thank you so much for being with me. I appreciate everyone who came and joined us and shared um, from their thoughts. Thank you so, so, so much. And I hope that from now on, you remember this day and really think about that sometime. Uh, let me just add, um, I think on behalf of every single person here, Liel, thank you so much. I, I, I want you to know, Liel planned every detail of this and you have presented it so clearly and so movingly. And especially, let's remember the goal of this whole program. The goal of the program is to allow us a window into what it is like to grow up in Israel. And the feelings especially that young people have today about this day is so important for us. Many of us are older, living here, to hear how this day impacts the everyday life of young people in Israel today. Liel, we could not have had this without you. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure, really. Thank you, Rabbi. And thank you, Stu, for um, helping me with the, the Zoom video, with the, the Zoom meeting. And thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great evening and have a great week.